set of working drawings during our time together. We're going to talk about dimensioning and adding text to our drawing. We're going to develop the elevations, the sections, some details, the floor plans, and discuss all the various tools that you can add further detail to them once you have them on a working drawing sheet. I am taping the broadcast, and this broadcast will be put on our YouTube channel and a private page where we'll send you a link to and you'll be able to watch it again and again. Um, if there's something that you want to watch again, just to understand the full concept of developing a full set of working drawings in the Envisioneer environment. So let's get started today and starting to discuss how to create the set of drawings. As you can see on my screen, I've already created a model. So I've got the plan view here, but you can also see that it is a, a full 3D model. And we're going to be taking this and putting it in, down onto some working drawing sheets so that we can um, fully develop that set of drawings. So before I move over to the sheets, there's always a few things that I want to do in relation to working drawings before going over to the drawing sheets. The first one is dimensioning. I always want to make sure that I have a full set of dimensions here before I take them to the sheets. The reason that I like to do the dimensioning here is because the software includes some automatic dimensioning tools, auto exterior dimension and auto interior dimension. These two tools are only found here when building the model. Once you go to your working drawing sheets, you can take advantage of these tools again. So I want to make sure that I do apply all of my dimensions. So I'm going to choose auto exterior dimensions, and that will wrap all of the dimensions around my floor plan for me. And you can see with new version 11 that we automatically include the angle dimensions around the building itself as part of your dimension settings. So going up to settings and choosing dimension settings, in here you can now um, choose that you want to include angled walls. And if you check off angled walls, it will automatically uh, dimension them around for you too. So that's nice and handy, and that's new in version 11 for those of you that haven't seen that new feature yet. Another new one that I'm also going to uh, show you when I do the interior walls is we have this ignore wall dimensions. Um, as I pull and cross a wall, I'm going to have a leading and a trailing edge dimension. And previously, it would put the dimension um, of the width of the wall between that as well. But now with ignore wall dimension, it will ignore that for us. So I'm also going to come back up and go to Tools under the pull-down menu, and then Dimensions, and choose Auto Interior Dimensions. And that allows me to pull through the house. I'm going to left-click to the outside of the building, pull through, and left-click to the exterior. You can see when I pick my points, too. See how far off the building I am? That ensures that I'm crossing that wall. Because if you don't fully cross the wall, and I'm just going to zoom in to make that a little bit bigger for you, it won't be able to dimension to that wall. So if you start off in the middle of a wall, you're not crossing the entire wall. You have to left click, left click on either side of that wall for it to see it. So I always do it more generously than I should and just so I make sure that I have everything um, that I need. So I have all of those dimensions. Those dimensions as well can be split and they can be further modified by um, selecting a dimension. I can right click on that dimension once I've selected it. And you can see I have the opportunity to um, split it apart. So if I wanted to split that particular dimension right here at the um, midpoint of that window, I can automatically do that. And it would automatically put those two dimensions for me. So that was the split command. But then if I later decide that I want to join them back together, I can take advantage of the join tool. And by selecting on join, I pick another dimension and it brings them uh, back together as one dimension. Okay, So you can take the dimensions that it automatically puts down for you, and you can play with them if you need to break them apart. Uh, maybe you want to dimension to some interior windows and doors or some cabinetry. That will allow you to take those dimensions and do so. I'm going to zoom back out. Dimensioning again, I always want to make sure I have all of those dimensions done here in the model space before I go to that worksheet space. Another thing that I need to do is develop my sections. Where do I want to cut through the model before I go out to create the section views? Down at the bottom of the screen, I have a section tool, Create New Section, will allow me to define a section. So I'm just going to 
pick on that tool. And then I define where I'm going to be picking through that model. So I'm going to pick a point here, draw a line through the building, and pick a point out here. That shows the section cut line. The next thing it's wanting me to do is to show what direction do I want to look. So I'm going to pull my cursor up in this direction. The further that I pull up, the further back it's going to see. So if I pulled all the way back here, it's going to see all the way to that back wall. Whereas if I'd stopped that point here and pulled through, it wouldn't see those back windows. So when you're creating a section, remember it's one, two points, pull back as deep as you want to look, and left click again. So let's do that procedure. I'm going to left click once, pull through, left click here, pull all the way up. You can see my cursor coming up all the way up through here to the top. I'm going to pick to that back arrow that I created there, left click, and it automatically creates um, that section for me. So I can see through the building itself and all the, all the different detail that I've cut through. Okay, so I'm going to use that in my working drawings when I start to develop them. I'll use this section. To return back to the 2D view, I click on this 2D button down at the bottom and it returns me to my 2D view. I can create as many sections that I need. So if I want to come back to the section tool, create a new section and perhaps come through the front door, left click, pull over to the left, left click, and then it will create another um, section for me looking that way in my building as well. So as many sections as you need to, you can create as many as you go through. You'll also notice over to the side here um, that I can rename them. It's First of all, going to give them as you numbered sections as you cut through. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, as many as you need. But I can rename that and I can say a section through front door. So I know it's that section name. So it's got that section name for me. Put it back into a 2D view. So now I have my sections developed and I have all of my dimensioning done and my model is complete. That makes me ready to be able to start developing the working drawings. Down at the very bottom of the screen, when you're creating your model, you do so in our model space here on this tab right here, model. And then you take views of that model and you start to put them onto the various sheets, the different tabs that you see next to it. These are the tabs that ship with our shipping catalog and templates that you originally use in the software. You may have already changed those tabs and updated them in your own custom template, but I am working from a shipping copy of the software and using the default templates. So this will be the same as anyone using our default. So when you first open up the software, you start drawing on that model tab, then you're going to take views and put them onto these various sheets. While we go out to the sheets, it's going to be an entirely different environment. We're more concerned about printing out our model in various views and putting them onto working drawing sheets. So this environment is more for that benefit. If we need new more drawing sheets, then I'll show you also how to create those as we go along as well. So we're first of all going to go through and click on the very first sheet here, one floor plan, and we will click on that one to go out into that space. When we transfer over from the model space into the working drawing space, you will notice the difference automatically at the very top that instead of building, interiors, landscape, terrain tabs at the top, we have insert tabs and draw tabs and modify tabs and tools. Again, these are all different tools and utilities that you're going to use to develop your working drawings. We're no longer building the model. We're printing it out and putting it onto working drawing sheets to develop our working drawings. As a default, um, the software comes with this title block already situated on the sheets for you. When I left click on that title block, you'll notice that it highlights green. Everything about that title block is selected. We've grouped all of the lines and the text together so it's easier to move around and manipulate. Also being part of a block and grouped information together, that allows us, if we update one sheet, to update all of the sheets that use that exact same title block. So it's easier when you're making and changing information. I'm just going to use my zoom tool here to zoom 
right around our title block area. So we can see the information that I've already populated into this sheet. When I'm looking at this sheet, you can see that um, it has version 11 project on 123 Main Street for Mr. and Mrs. Jones. That information comes directly from the project manager in Envisioneer. To access the project manager, you go to the file pull-down menu, and there you'll see project manager. The information you fill in there will automatically update the default title blocks that are in the software. So I'm going to go to Project Manager. And there you can see it's version 11 project. So you can see the correlation of the information here coming through Mr. and Mrs. Jones and 123 Main Street. It's all been pulled through. So if I came along and I changed this version 11 project to say, um, new residence, and I click OK, you can see that it automatically updates the title block to say new residence. So take advantage of the default title block that's part of the shipping software and take advantage of the project manager information. Type it out there once and that will go to all of the working drawing sheets that are there. It will automatically populate them for you if you use our default title block. I'm going to left click on this default title block here so you can see how we linked those two together. So for those of you that are using maybe an existing title block that you've already developed, how you can take advantage of the project manager information being relayed into the title block. So again, I've left clicked on the title block and it highlights itself. And over to the catalog panel to the right, where we normally choose the items that we're going to insert. We select a wall from there. We insert it when we are model view. Here, when we're in the worksheet view, now that properties pane along the right-hand side is devoted to showing us the properties of the objects that we select. So once I've selected that title block, now it's telling me that it's a block. Everything's grouped together in a block. And I can edit the definition of that block, and I can edit the attributes. First, I'll look at the definition of the block, and then we'll talk about the attributes. The definition of the block means what defines this as a block. All of the lines, all of the text, everything that's grouped together. So we want to edit the individual items that have been grouped together in this block. So we're going to edit their definition. When we pick on that button, that automatically um, brings us in so that every line that's part of that title block, every string of text are individual elements. So we can erase out the information that we don't want, and we can update it with information that we do want. So for those of you that would like to take out the CADSoft logo and the CADSoft address, we appreciate it if you keep it on yours and do a little advertising for us. But realistically, we realize you're going to want to replace that with your own logo. So you can select our logo and choose Delete on your keyboard. Delete on your keyboard will automatically make it disappear. It's gone. So now to get in your custom title block, that's when you're going to pick on this button right here. And I'll just circle around it so you can see it. This one is called adding an image. When I pick on that add image button, it will allow me to bring in JPEGs, bitmaps, and target files. And I can use those if I have my company logo in any one of those formats. I would, it allows me to look right out onto my hard drive and find one in that format. When you're looking out on your um, hard drive for those um, files, make sure that you have the best quality um, logo that you, you have. So I'm going to um, look for our CADSoft logos here. You can see I've got quite a few of them here. So if I wanted to choose maybe just our CADSoft diamond, I can open it up. And then it shows you just how large that's going to be. So I'm going to bring that, scale that right down to about half that size to about a two and see how small that is then so you can scale it down there I hit insert and I place it in so I pick on this insert import image button it brings up a dialog box where I can locate my custom logo on my hard drive 
in JPEG bitmap or target file format. I can scale it down if it's too large in that dialog box. And when I hit insert, it attaches to my cursor and I left click to insert it. The text that you see in there, I've just typed in that text as simple text. So I can update that to your company. So I can um, type in any of that. Let me just double click on that again to bring up that text. Double clicking on it so you can say your company name, if I could spell company today. Um, and when you have that and click OK, that'll update it to your company. So it's just simple text. Double clicking on any of the text in that dialog box will pop it up and you can replace it. You will notice, I'm just going to zoom down here, this text right here. This text looks a little different than the one below it. You'll see it's got a dollar sign in front of it. These are what we call um, attributes. They're strings of text that pull information automatically into them. These are the strings of text that are automatically going back to our project manager to insert. To be able to add those to your title block, you come up to the um, insert, sorry, the tools, and then um, you're going to be inserting them as a block. So I'm just going to, um, sorry, bring us back to the insert pull down menu, blocks, and insert an attribute. So insert block, insert an attribute. The attribute dialog box pops up, and you can see all of these tags at the very top. All of these tags directly link to our project manager. So if I wanted to say um, company name, and then click OK here, I'm adding company name here. And the company name that's part of my project manager if I put company in here, so I'll just type in CADSoft as an example. When I exit out of my editing the definition of my title block, that will change to CADSoft. So again, insert, block, insert an attribute. These attributes are strings of text that you can update, and the tagged ones at the very top here are ones that are linked to our project manager. So you want to take advantage of those if you want to automatically update them per project. Once I'm done editing the text that's part of my title block and the lines, if I wanted to remove any of lines, I must hit the Escape key. When I hit the Escape key, notice the change. It groups everything back together. It's all one block. And instead of having those attributes that are being defined to look back to my project manager, it automatically updates them with the project in, uh, manager information. So hitting escape regroups them and displays the information that you want to see. So I left click to, ex to select it in the object properties dialog on the right hand side of my screen where we normally see our catalog. That allow me to edit that definition of that object and that's where I added in those um, logo using our insert image option and I also inserted the attributes, the strings of text that are automatically updated in our project manager. Now I'm going to click on edit attributes. Attributes are another piece of text like the attributes that we put in to automatically link up to our project manager. These ones can be automatically updated just by clicking on attributes. And it will come up and say, okay, what's the sheet name? That's an attribute. What's the sheet number, drawing name, and the scale? The reason that we just don't put in sheet A1, sheet A2, is because when they're blocked together and all the information is blocked together, it copies that from sheet to sheet to sheet. So if I added in A1 onto this block, every sheet would be named A1. By having it as an attribute, that means I can update it and change it per sheet. And I've done that with the A1 value here, with the name of the drawing, the subname of the drawing, and the scale, because those are things that typically are going to change per sheet. Again, to add in an attribute onto your sheet of perhaps information you want to change per sheet, you come up to the Insert pull-down menu, Blocks, and Insert an Attribute. Instead of using one of the predefined tags that you see here, 
that's where you can type in your own tag. So if I wanted to say draftsman, and the prompt is a draftsman, then I can put in, and I'll just put a default in here. Um, text here is draftsman. Then if I click OK and I place that somewhere on my sheet, I'll just put it up here in the corner here, um, that puts in that, a, that attribute of draftsman. So I can add in that draftsman. And I would put that in at the um, right inside the block itself, as, like we did before. So I can keep updating it and changing it per sheet. OK, so take advantage of editing the title block. If this one's close, the default one is close to what you would like to use, but you'd like to make some updates and change, edit that definition. If you'd like to change the text and the logo, go in there, modify them, um, replace them, and do what you need to to make this title block your own and something that matches your office standards. And then remember to hit Escape, because hitting Escape takes you back outside of that block, and you're no longer working inside of it. Now that we have our title block here established and all the information that we want as part of that title block, now it's time to insert drawings onto this sheet of paper that we want to print out. So on this first sheet of paper, I'm going to insert a copy of the floor plan. We're going to um, look at a view of our model and bring it in, and we'll add some different detail to it as well. So I'm going to come up to Define a Smart View. Under this Insert pull-down menu, Define a Smart View allows me to define a view of my model that I want to bring on to this sheet to print out as part of my working drawings. So I'm defining a Smart View. The Insert View dialog box will then appear, and this allows me to define the view of the model that I do want to bring in. On the left-hand side of the dialog box, it gives you different view types um, and orientations of your model that you want, may want to insert. We're going to stick with this 2D um, orientation to begin with, and we want to insert, first of all, the ground floor plan. I'm going to keep it at a quarter inch scale, but you can see I can change that to any scale that I want, or I can go to a user-defined scale. That allows me to do an odd scale, um, perhaps maybe if I want to fit it onto the sheet a little better. But we'll keep it at the standard quarter inch equals a foot, for our floor plan. In the view portion of this dialog box, what you see in that portion of the dialog box is exactly what's going to insert. So you may want to take advantage of the various view options down here at the bottom of the dialog box. As an example, I'm going to hit zoom out, this what looks like a magnifying glass with a minus sign on it, to zoom out just a little bit. So I'm I can ensure that I see all of my dimensions and nothing's being clipped off. Zooming in and out here is not changing the scale. The scale is directly affected by the values you choose on the left-hand side. This is just defining what exactly we're seeing when we go to insert this view onto our sheet. Okay? What you see here is exactly what's going to insert. So even if I zoomed in on just one particular area, just like this, this one small portion of my model is all that's going to insert. So you can take advantage of that strategically and zooming in on different rooms if it was a remodel project or something that you wanted to detail and profile by just zooming in on that one section. But I'm going to make sure I've got my whole model in, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can ensure that everything is going to be included. Also at the bottom of the dialog box, you have two options for how you're going to insert this view of the model onto your drawing sheet. You'll see there's an image option and a drawing option. The image option brings the view of our model in as a raster view, which means that the computer is going to use all the various pixels on the screen that define colors to recreate the view as it places it on the sheet. That type of view, the more you zoom in, the more pixelated and worse it looks. But it allows you to show textures and materials. So it's ideal for any kind of 3D view that you want to bring in. When you're bringing in views like your floor plans and your elevations and your section drawings, 
that's when you're always going to want to bring them in as a drawing. That brings them in as a vector style of image. A vector image makes up the image by realizing that a line is a line, and a circle is a circle, and text is text. And the more you zoom in, the better it looks. Those are ideal for floor plans, elevations, and sections. That type of view, however, can't recreate textures and materials. So it's not ideal for any kind of 3D view that you want to bring in to show the materials or any kind of extra JPEGs and bitmaps that have colors and textures as part of it. Two different types of view for two different types of drawings that you want to bring in. So because we're bringing in a floor plan, I want to make sure I have it set to drawing. So I'm bringing in a 2D ground floor plan at a quarter inch scale, and I'm bringing it in as a drawing. The name up here at the top, you can also rename it to any type of view that you want to. So I'm going to call this ground floor plan. So if I ever have to delete it out later, I'll remember the name that I called it. Then all I have to do is hit the insert button, and a copy of that floor plan will attach itself to my cursor, and I left click to insert it. So now it's on that sheet. Another advantage of bringing it um, in as a, a view of your model is that, as a vector view, is that if I update and change anything in my model, I know that this view is going to change. So take advantage of that with any kind of floor plan views that you have, and make sure you bring them in that way as well. So I want to profile that to you. I'm just going to go back to our model. And when I'm back out looking at our model, I'm going to make a change, and I'm going to update it onto the drawing as well. So to make a simple change, um, I'm just going to take one of these chairs that I've inserted, the sofa, and I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard. So it's no longer part of the model. When I go back out to my one floor plan sheet, you can see that it's still there. I have to tell the, um, the software that I want to update this view to take it out. The reason that we give you the opportunity to keep it or to take it away um, is if you're in a remodel situation, you might want to keep views of your model from the very original. So I might have just drawn up the original footprint of the home and inserted it onto a working drawing sheet. And then back in my model, I might have reconfigured that original footprint to match the new remodel that I'm creating. I don't want to update that view I've already inserted. I want to do additional sheets. So when I come here to update Smart Views globally, I can uncheck any views that I wouldn't want to update and make sure the ones I do want to update are checked. So when I do hit Update, it looks back to my model it recognizes that the sofa has been taken away, and you can see that that's no longer part of my model here either. Okay, so these views that you're inserting, when you're inserting them as a drawing, as a vector image, they're updatable. So you can make changes to your model and know that they're going to be reflected at those changes on your working drawing sheets as well. While I'm here in this space, and I have this drawing of my floor plan, I can add further text and information to this view as well here on the working drawing sheet. Here I would come up to tools, I would choose text and text, tools, text, text. And I'm going to give it our uh, labels style of text, a nice big large style of text. And I'm going to type the note ground floor plan. And I'm going to underline it and make it bold. And then I'm going to return here, and I'm going to change the text style to a smaller dimension text style. And I'm going to uncheck the underline there, and I'm going to type in scale. One quarter inch equals one foot. So you can change your text style while you're in this dialog box. And this text dialog box allows you to type out text that you want to add into your um, your working drawing sheet. You can see I've got it as a center justification, but if I would prefer to have it left or right justified, I can do that as well. And then I simply hit OK, and that text will attach itself to my cursor. 
you'll notice another big change about being here on the working drawing sheet is your cursor isn't just an arrow like it is in model view where it's very handy to point the arrow at something and select it. Here in working drawing sheet area, your cursor looks like crosshairs, which allows you to line it up with items that are already part of the model. So I always like to line up my text um, with the very left-hand outside wall. So I just line up that crosshair with it and left click to insert that text at the bottom. Okay, so that was tools, text. Text allows you to um, put in that text underneath and describe the type of drawing. I'm going to zoom in on the garage here and I'll add some additional notes as well. By coming up to tools and leaders, we also have a tool called description with leaders. So I'm going to pick on that tool and then I'm going to select on my wall. And then I'm going to left click to point at that wall, turn off my ortho so I'm kind of coming off on an angle and then straighten it out and it automatically gives me a description of that wall, that it's two by six with stucco. So the descriptive tool, tools, leaders, description, will automatically read the name of the element that you're clicking on to fill it in as the beginning of the text. So the better the names you give all of your catalog items, the better these descriptions are going to appear. So automatically it's labeling this as 2 by 6 stucco. I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to make one further change. When I was zoomed in on the floor plan here, you can see I've got the outline of my footings from my foundation plan. I want to eliminate those. So I'm going to select the floor plan that I inserted. You can see that it groups it all together. And then over to the right in our object properties, just the same um, portion of the screen that we looked at when we were editing the title block, it'll now give me the properties of the object that I've selected, my floor plan. So I want to redefine the settings that I used when I placed in this floor plan. So I'm going to hit redefine. When I hit redefine, it brings me back into the um, Smart View dialog box that we were originally in. And here, down at the um, bottom of the dialog box, we see this little tool that looks like an eye. And that's called our view filter. It allows us to turn on and off the visibility of different items that I might not want to see in this particular view. So as an example, if I realized I really didn't want to see the exterior or interior accessories or interior furniture or the lighting, I can turn all of those various elements off. You'll also notice in the upper right-hand corner of this dialog box, it looks at all of the various locations as well. So I'm going to uncheck all locations. And I'm going to highlight the foundation location. And then I'm going to hit the button that says display nothing. When I click on the button that says display none, you'll notice that all the eyes close. Anything on the foundation location is now turned off. If I then highlight the ground floor in that list, you can see the various eyes that are still on on my ground floor. And again, I could redefine all of those various eyes and turn them on and off if I need to. And same for the second floor, if there's anything there, I could turn them off too. So when I click OK, you can see that the updated view in the dialog box eliminates the footings from going all the way around the building for me. So that's taking advantage of that view filter. And then I just hit Update, and it updates the sheet. So if you find that you want to turn something off or turn it back on, or you've added something to your model, you, all you have to do is update globally the smart view if it's a change in your model or redefine the settings of that particular view to turn things off or on or maybe even change the scale if you need to. Now I'm going to hop on to our next sheet down at the very bottom. I'm going to click on two elevations and that will bring me to a new clean piece of paper and that title block is the same title block as on the first page but you can see the text, the attributes have been updated, so this is now sheet A2. Here on the second piece of paper, I'm going to automatically create elevational views of my model. 
To do that, I go back to that exact same tool that I used to insert the floor plan view of my model. I'm going to define a smart view. In the define smart view dialog box, again, on the left-hand side of the dialog box, it shows you the various views that you can insert. The second last tab that looks like a green square with a black triangle pointing to the right is the elevations tab. So when I click on that tab, it automatically throws the model into an elevational view. And you can see I've got my front elevation, or I can switch that to any of the listed elevational views. So there's my front elevation. Again, to the right, what you see is exactly what's going to insert. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I have um, most of my model visible. Um, I'm going to also take advantage of the information that's outlined on the left-hand side under datum lines. So in this dialog box on the left-hand side over here with datum lines, what it's telling me is that it can automatically include datum lines when it goes to insert this elevation. So I'm going to say, yes, I want datum lines. And I want it to mark with the datum lines, throw in a line where the ground level is, throw in a line where the head height is, and you can change all of these to yes or no, your preference. And I could do ceiling height and wall height. I'll just keep those two on for now. So it's automatically going to add those in line. How it draws in those lines and draws in the text to define that this is head height, this is ground level, is dealt with in that settings button that you see under those options. So I'm going to click on that settings button. Here in the program settings dialog box that appears, we define how we want those datum lines to look. So first of all, it's going to put in, it can put in data mark. So our de uh, default data mark is a circle um, which we've divided and put in like the standard datum line symbol. So I'm just crudely drawing it over there to the left. So it's going to put in that datum block. But this is a block that you can define. So if you have your own datum block, you can place it into the drawing and then call it up so that it uses it as the datum block. When it puts in the datum block, it's going to attach it to a leader line. And that leader line, you can define its position. So I want it on both ends of our elevation, so on the left and the right. I want it to be six feet long. And I want its color here, you can see, to be red. You can see the line type is continuous and the line weight. If you're not happy with any of those selections, again, just select on them. And you can change it to be anything that you would want it to be. Cutting through the building, we have our datum line. And our datum line, we can see, is going to be red and it's going to be dashed. So there'll be a dashed line going all the way through our building till it meets up with the datum line and the leader that's coming from it. And again, you can um, change all of those values that you see here. Above and below that datum line, it can put text. So there's going to be a description of the line. So when I have ground level, those are all be to the right. So ground level and head height will be to the right. To the left of the um, elevation, we'll have the elevation marking. So it'll say one foot above grade or six foot eight above grade, whatever those values may be. So that's all of the datum line information that you can include automatically with your elevations. This is also included with section views as well. So I'm going to hit apply and OK. Yes, I want to include the datum lines. Yes, I'm happy with all of my settings that it has there. And um, yes, I'm going to insert it as a drawing again. Remembering that when you insert it as a drawing, that when it comes in as a drawing, it's a vector. So if I need to make any changes to my model, I know that it will automatically update and change um, my worksheet views. If I had chosen the drawing option there beside the insert button, then it's going to come in as an image made up of tiny little pixels. So it's like a photograph taken at that moment in time. So if any changes happen to our model, this photograph, this image that we'd insert if it was brought in as an image, could not be updated. So when you're clicking insert, the copy of the elevation will attach itself to your cursor. Make sure that you set that as a drawing file. I left click, 
and there's our front elevation. And beside our front elevation, we have our datum lines, head height, ground floor, and there's the little datum symbols that it automatically brought in for us. So that's on the right-hand side. If we look, and I pan over here to look to the right of our elevation, you can see to the right of our elevation that, it, again, we've got our datum lines and our datum block, and it gives you the elevation, just like we called out when we were defining our um, datum line information. Again, more information can be um, attached to these elevations. So I'm going to zoom in on part of the elevation to profile some of that for us. I'm going to go to um, the Tools pull-down menu. And um, we can put in any kind of dimensions that we wanted to, although we have some of those already put in. We also have different ones under the Draw. Under Detail, we now have the Roof Symbol tool that I'm going to profile to you. So I'm going to choose Roof Symbol. The Roof Symbol tool will allow me to find the slope that I want to use, so I can tell it that it's um, a 1212. If I'm not sure, I can pick on it, and you'll see this little button appear to the right. It looks like three little dots. That allows me to go out and to pick um, points along the slope, and it'll automatically come up and tell me what that slope is. So I know I have a 3 and 12 slope. The textile that you want to define this in, I'll just put it in as our dimension height. And the length of the line, the original line, I'm going to make it as one foot. When I click OK, you can see that the roof symbol um, attaches to my cursor, and I can left-click to insert it. So for as many different slopes as I want to show, I can repeat that process. So again, that's um, found under the Draw pull-down menu, under Details, and that was our Roof Symbol tool. You can also find that under the Draw tab. At the very end, you'll see Roof Symbol icon there to select as well. And by clicking on there, it's the exact same thing. I can go out and, again, define a slope that I want it to use, and then from there go out and um, place that in for the model itself and, and place it on. Okay, So you can define all of those various slopes that you need as well. Okay, um, In here, we also have the descriptions with leader tool, or we can also do text as a description, not using a leader. So if I don't want to point the arrow anywhere, I don't have to as well. I can just do a description. I'm picking on the wall here. It tells me it's 2 by 6 stucco, and I can place that in the middle. When we're using um, the descriptions and the leaders and, and putting those in, um, I'm just going to put one here as well under this wood column here. Um, while I'm putting those in, and placing them around that, um, we can repeat our commands by right-clicking on those as well. So if I wanted to repeat a command, you can right-click, or I can tell it I want to spline the arrow. So I'm just going to pick here, and when I'm splining it, you can see that I can put it on any kind of curve that I want to as well. So right-clicking will allow you to spline that too. So you've got a lot of options on personalizing the look of the working drawings to, to suit your needs and automatically add in some, some text to do so. I'm going to insert another elevation. So I'm going to go back up to defining a smart view. Go back to our elevations tab. And this time I'm going to insert the right elevation. And when I'm inserting the right elevation, um, I'm going to tell it that I want it to apply the hatch patterns. So this little button at the very bottom allows me to see the elevations in different types of views. So this is an, a hatch pattern view. You can see I can also put it into a rendered outline view. So it'll show the exact materials and the textures. Now that it's showing textures, look at my insertion options. I only have image because it can only use it as a raster, creating those little pixels. But if I switch it back to a hatch pattern view, now I have image and drawing to choose from. So make sure when you're defining your various views that you can take advantage of 
automatically having a view hatched for you um, so that you don't have to add the hatch later. Take advantage if it's maybe a proposal that you're creating. Those rendered outline views and showing the various materials might illustrate your plan a little bit better than just the hatch pattern view. So depending on the type of drawing that you're creating, if it's more of a preliminary plan, not a full set of working drawings, submittals, um, you might want to take advantage of using those um, other alternative types of views and showing the actual materials. But because we're creating a working drawing, that's when I would take advantage of either the hidden line view, where I'm not showing any type of hatch pattern, or the pattern view, where it's going to look at the actual elements that I chose, a stucco wall, a concrete footing, a asphalt shingle roof, and call out those materials and the hatch patterns um, when it goes to, to in, insert them and in, so I don't have to do that extra work afterwards if I do want to show the hatch pattern. So again, the data lines to the left, I'm picking the information that I want to include, the head height, um, the floor level. Um, I'm choosing that I want it to come in at a quarter inch equals a, uh, a foot again. And I'm also choosing that this one I want to be hatch pattern. With all of that done, I click on the Insert button, and then a copy of the elevation will attach itself to my cursor, and I left-click to insert it. And I have my elevations in. When you're inserting the hatched elevations, you can see it's fully hatched here. What if you only wanted to hatch certain areas of the elevation? Perhaps this is a remodel project, and you don't want to hatch the existing. You just want to hatch the new construction. Well, we have hatch tools that allow you to do that too. I'm just going to zoom in on our building. And I'm going to pretend that this is maybe a new front entrance way. And I only want to hatch the front entrance, not the rest of the building. So I'm going to go to our Draw tab. And one of our Draw tools that we have, you can see, is called Polygon Hatch. And we have one that's called Boundary Hatch. And I'll show you how to use both of those. So first I'm going to use Boundary Hatch. The Boundary Hatch tool allows me to define a type of hatch pattern. We get a little swatch preview here. And if I left click on that swatch preview of that solid hatch pattern, it brings me into a list of various patterns. And I'm going to scroll down till I see um, one that I like. And I'll just call it maybe our sand random dots so that it's looking like stucco. And now what I have to do is define a boundary. So you can see this little illustration before, so b below select boundaries that it's going to be looking for lines. And when it detects a line that's all connected together, it's going to fill that in with the hatch pattern. If it sees an inner boundary, it's going to detect that as well and keep it from filling in there, which is handy for our windows and doors. It's not going to fill them in. So I'm going to select the boundary, pick on that button, and then move my cursor into the area of our front entrance way there. And when my cursor is in an area, you can see it highlights with a green dashed line. I left click to accept it, and it turns it to a solid um, green. So then I go to the next area, left click for that one, up here, over to the left. So I'm just going to be picking all the areas that I want it to hatch pattern for me. So I can choose all of the various areas, and it will define those for me. When I'm done, I simply right click and hit Enter to let it know that I'm finished making my selections. And then I click OK. And it fills those areas in nicely for me which with my hatch pattern. So I don't have to. Um, hatch the entire model, I can just be selective of where I want it to appear. Our polygon hatch tool um, allows us to define our own boundary line. So I'm going to be creating a boundary line, and it's only going to be putting the hatch in that area. When it creates and I'm drawing out that boundary line, it can actually put the line of the boundary line on my screen as well as kind of a solid line around the hatch or I can uncheck it to say, just give me the hatch. I don't need the boundary line. It automatically remembers that we wanted that sand random dot pattern that we selected with our 
um, boundary hatch, but I could go in and change that to anything that I'd like. And then when I click OK, now I'm defining points. It's like a polygon. You can see that I'm creating. And that polygon shape that I'm creating, it's going to fill that area in with our hatch pattern. So when I right click after defining all those points and click Finish, that area that I defined now has that hatch pattern in it. So for those of you that like a, a more artistic um, hatch pattern view where you're just illustrating in a small area of the elevation where the hatch is going to look like, saving on maybe a little bit of ink so that you're not using all of the ink that would be involved in hatching the entire elevation, you can take advantage of our polygon hatch tool. I'm going to zoom out. So when we inserted our elevations, it came in automatically with our data lines. It could come in automatically fully hatched as well. And then we can just add the individual notes that we want to using the tools that we illustrated, text, descriptive text, leaders with text, and um, descriptions with leaders as well. So lots of different options for um, defining all the various elements. I'm now going to go to the third sheet, our detail sheet, where I'm going to insert our elevation views and take advantage of those views and insert some details as well. Once on this sheet, I go back to that Insert tab and pick on that exact same tool again, Define a Smart View. This is the one tool that you'll really use when you go to create your working drawing. So the more practice you can give yourself of using this tool and understanding all the various options that are in there, the better you'll be when you go to create your full set of working drawings. So I'm going to define a Smart View. Again, that Insert View dialog box pops up. And I'm going to pick on that very last tab on the left-hand side that brings me up my elevational view, so various views that I've cut through my model. I'm going to pick that one that we called Section Through the Front Door. And it brings up that view of our model um, that was created. And from there, I've got all of the same options. If I wanted that to be hatch patterned to show the various materials, I can bring that in hatch patterned as well. Um, if I wanted to include the, the datum lines and say, yes, I need a ground level, and yes, I need the head height again, I have that exact same option. I also have the ability to change the scale. So if I feel that a quarter inch equals a foot, is going to be too large for this section view, then I can bring that down or I can um, change that scale to maybe be a half inch equals a foot if I wanted a larger view. Again, at the very bottom left, the insertion option. Important when you're bringing in a section view that again, it's set to drawing, not image, so that the lines are lines and they look better and better as you zoom in on them. And um, they can be updated if changes happen to your model. So picking the Insert button, a copy of the elevation will attach itself to your cursor, and you left click to insert that onto your sheet. Now that that's in here as well, you can take advantage of all of the same tools that we were looking at before. So if I wanted to add text, I can do that, or maybe even a dimension. So within here, if you wanted to show the distance between columns, I could say I need a linear dimension. The linear dimension tool works by picking two points. The two points that you pick, it will show you um, the distance between them. So if I'm coming through to this column, I'm going to left click on one, go to the next column, left click on the next one, and then I'm showing it where I want that dimension to appear. That's my third pick. So I'm going to left click again, and it will place that dimension so I can see the distance between those two. Um, two columns. I right click and tell it that I'm finished with that dimension. If I left click on that dimension, um, you can see that over on the right hand side, I have object properties for this particular dimension as well. If I wanted to scale the dimension, and if maybe I was working on a scaled image, I wanted to scale up the dimension as well, I can do that. Or I can value scale it, so if I can say that this is twice the value, and you can see now it's 22 foot 4 instead of being 
um, are 11 foot 2. So if I, you can change and scale those up. I can also override the text as well. So if I wanted that to say um, typical, I'm going to type TYP here, 11 foot 2 between columns then when I hit enter there, that overrides the text that it originally put in, and that's the new text that's there. So you also have that text override as well that you can um, take advantage of with the, with the dimensions. And while we're here, we also have the same tool for the roof symbol. So if I wanted to go out and pick that roof slope again, putting my cursor along the slope, it will show me that slope, and then I can um, put my cursor right on and show that that's a one and two, one and twelve slope for that particular roof. Um, so you've got that to take advantage of as well for your elevational views when you're adding text and dimensions in there um, to fully describe that view. While we're in this type of view as well, um, we can also add in further information. So I'm going to pick on this view again. And I'm going to redefine the settings to tell it that when we're looking at this view, I'm going to go into that view filter. And in the view filter, I'm going to tell it that I want it to display everything. So I'm going to unlock all of these different views that were locked. And basically, they were locked to lock off the framing so that you didn't see all of the framing. But I'm going to say I want to turn that absolutely all the way on and update my view. Um, so I can see the framing that's involved in my section as well. So I'm going to turn those all on, click OK, and then update my um, smart view, hit update, and that'll update my model again here on my worksheet. So when I'm looking at the view now, now I can see the bottom plate and the top plate, and you can see this window that I've put in. If I wanted to show that there's insulation in this wall, I can take advantage of some of our various draw tools as well. And one of the draw tools that we have is bad insulation. So if I want to show bad insulation in this wall, I'm putting my cursor on top of the bottom plate to the left of it, the left corner, left click. I'm going to pull up to show it that I want it to go to the underside of the bottom plate there. Or that's, I guess, a, looks more for the sill. And then I'm going to pull through the wall to show it the width of the um, insulation and left click again. So you can add details like that to all of your views. I'm going to zoom in on top of that, above the header above that window and do the exact same thing again. Um, choosing the bad insulation tool, I'm going to go above my header, left click, go to the top plate of the wall, left click, pull through the wall, left click to show that there's insulation there too. Okay, so you can take advantage of that tool to even further describe and, and um, illustrate your section. I'm going to go back to the Define Smart View dialog box again. So back to our Insert um, tab and then to Define a Smart View. I want to define another view from this section. So I'm going to go back to that Section View tab, the very last tab in our Insert View dialog box. And under that insert view, I'm going to click again at the section through the front door, so we get the exact same one. And then I'm going to, again, turn everything on, so unlocking all of our view filtered items, display all, so all the lot eyes are all on fully. Click OK, so I can get all of the various views here. And then I'm going to pan over, so I can see our footing detail. So I just want kind of a detailed view here. Just this area right here, just this wall section area is really what I want to bring in. So I'm going to um, pan over. So that's all I really see. And I can turn off the visibility of the interior furniture to get rid of it. Okay, So I just wanted this kind of wall section view. And I can bring that in in a hatch pattern view as well to show those various hatch patterns. And I'm going to bring that in at a half inch equal to foot. What I see in this insert view dialog box is exactly what it's going to bring in.
So I know it's going to show me my footer, my foundation wall, my floor slab, and my um, wall through this section. If I had brought it over to the right, I'd see more. But I want to bring everything and pan it over all the way as far as I can to the left. So it's just bringing in the detail that I want to see. Once I have that view defined, I, in, I would define again the scale. I want it at half inch equal to foot, making sure that I'm setting it to drawing. And then I hit insert. And a copy of that detail attaches itself to my cursor. And I'm just going to zoom out here on my working drawing sheet to place it beside my section. So I've got a blown up detail taken from that section that I'm going to place on the sheet. And I'm going to add more detail to it as well. Okay, So there's the view on our sheet. And under our draw pull down menu, if I wanted to show a circle from here, and pointing it over to our detail here. And I'll just turn my ortho back on here. Pointing it over here, then I can do so. And then drawing a bigger circle here to show that this is the blown up detail that I'm referring to from that section over there. Okay. So you can blow up those details and clip whatever you'd like. When I left click on the detail that I brought in, remembering it's a smart view from my model, and I can see all the different properties. So if I want to update it and change it, I can do that by editing the definition. When I edit the definition of a smart view that's brought in, I'm basically losing my tie back to the model. I'm telling it that I'm not going to update this view again. So I'm just bringing in and taking out things that I don't want to see. So I'm just going to break, take out all these extra wall lines that I might not want to see. And I brought in the datum lines, which I really didn't want to. So I'm going to delete those out as well. So I'm just deleting out things that I didn't want to, to bring in. Oops. And I hit escape there. And delete. Deleting out all of those various views. OK, so I'm just going to grab those again and hit delete. So I'm just taking out the views of the model that I don't want. And in here, this is where I could say I want some bad insulation to show um, between these points. Add that detail in. I might want to draw in um, the extra line here for um, the floor slab that's coming through and coming across. And I'm going to repeat that to bring it down as well. Um, so you can just grab and use these various draw tools. Pick on the line. Left click, left click draws a line. Right click, tell it you're repeating it or that you want to finish that command. When I'm all done updating this block, I hit Escape and it updates for me so I can see it on the screen. If that is a detail that you know that you might want to use again, you can always um, draw it as a block, create it as a block, so you can insert it onto future drawings as well. So if I went to the Insert pull-down menu and I chose Block, define a block, it would ask me for a name. So I would say stucco wall section. And you'll notice I can't click OK. It needs to know a couple things. One, a base point. When I go to insert this block again, where do I want to pick from? So I'm going to pick here that I want to attach it to my cursor from the top of that footer. And then what do I want to include? What objects are part of this block? I hit the Select Object. And I click through on changing everything to green that I want to include in it. Hit Enter. Now it's a block. It's called Stucco Wall Section. When I go to insert it the next time, it's going to attach it to my cursor from the top of that footing. The objects that I selected by holding down my left mouse button and dragging through all of those various objects till they turn green are all selected. And they're part of that block as well. I click OK. If I wanted to insert that again, I go to Insert Blocks, Insert Block. So where I defined the block the last time, now I'm going to insert it. So when I choose Insert Block, it says, well, what block do you want? Ah, there's my stucco wall section. Select it, click OK, and there you can see it's attached to my cursor from the top of the footing. And wherever I left click, it's going to insert. Okay, It's going to delete that out. So if you know you've developed a block, 
that is typical for your type of construction that you'd use over and over again. Save it as a block. Take the time to add in the insulation, the hatch, the text, the dimensions that fully define that block, and bring them in. We do have um, a number of predefined details that you can use. They're found under here, under the Insert um, tab. The second last tool beside the Insert image where you'd grab your logo from, we have the Import CAD file. By clicking on that tool, that brings us into a dialog box that allows us to find different details. I'll double click on Details, brings me into a full list of all various um, details that we've created for you. So I'll do one that's a, how about a foundation footing detail, just like we did there. This one we've taken the time and to add in the text, add in dimensions, um, and fully develop it. So we can bring it in. I'll bring it in here, insert, copy attaches to my cursor, and I left click. Okay. When you bring in any of the blocks that are part of our catalog, you can edit them as well. So if they're almost what you want, but you want to make a couple changes, left click to select it. Remember, it's a block. So if I look over to my object properties, just like I did for the title block, just like I did for that um, section that I brought in that I made into my detail, I can edit the definition of this block. And I can change the text, double click on the text. Just say I want it to be footing D and footing, foundation wall at footing. It's all the text I want. There it is. Or if I want to, I'm going to zoom in close so you can see this happening. I wanted to remove a line or get rid of the hatch that's in there. All of it is separate entities. I can left click to select them and change them and move them around as I need to. When I'm done with all the changes that I want to make to that detail, I hit Escape. Remembering that the escape key puts it into a block again, so everything is grouped together again. Okay, so now it's one block, and I can go and further create different details or insert new details as I want to onto this drawing sheet. I'm going to zoom back out again, and I'm going to go back up to our defined Smart View dialog box to insert another type of detail or um, view onto our model. I'm going to go to a 3D view from the lower left to look at our model. And in this type of view, I could insert this as a uh, 3D view image. You can see I can only insert it as an image at this point. Um, but I'm going to do a couple things. I'm first of all going to change it to a hidden line view so I could have more of a schematic view, uh, a pencil type of view of our 3D view of our model. And I'm also going to go to the View Filter and tell it that I want to turn off everything in relation to the ground floor and the second floor. The only thing that I want to see on the ground floor is the wall framing. So I'm going to click on Ground Floor, Wall Framing, turn that on. And same with my second floor in case there's any up there as well. So I see everything on my foundation but nothing on the ground floor but wall framing and nothing on the second floor but wall framing. My terrain is all turned off. Click OK and you get a view like this. And with this type of view, you can insert that onto a drawing sheet so they can see how the walls are going to be framed and sitting on the foundation. I'll keep that at a quarter inch equals a foot or again it could be any scale that you want to bring it in at. And I'm going to change it to drawing. I want to bring that in as a drawing so I can update it. I click Insert. A copy of it attaches to my cursor. And I left click to place that type of view onto my sheet as well. When you're in that Define Smart View dialog box, always remember what you see is what you're going to insert. So fully take advantage of that, like we did for the section, by zooming up and only looking at that one framed wall to create a detail. By going to our 3D views, like we did, to create a framed view of our entire model sitting on the foundation in a hidden line view. 
You can create all different types of views by playing with all these various tools, turning off the visibility of some things. So on this type of view, I'll say display nothing and nothing on our terrain. The only thing that I want to show is the roof framing. That's all I want to be visible, and I want it to be in a hidden line view. And now I've got a roof framing plan. And I'll reduce that in scale to maybe an eighth inch so we can fit it on, insert it as a drawing. And there's that view onto your sheets as well. Turn on and off the different elements to recreate different types of views that you have. When you're creating your full set of working drawings and maybe you have electrical elements on your floor plan and you want to create that um, electrical plan, if you've been taking the time to put in your wiring and taking the time to put in your electrical elements, well then you can turn off everything in your smart view except those electrical elements and create that type of view. All by the understanding of this defined smart view dialog box. Understanding all the various views you have on the left hand side and all of the different view filter options you have down below. Either by filtering out something visi visibility or changing its type from wireframe to hidden line to rendered or patterned creates an entirely different type of view that you can take advantage of um, for your working drawings. Hit close here and I'm going to go to our very last page and here we've had it set up for a site plan. So when we're looking for our site plan we have to go back to our model and I want to turn on the visibility of all of our various site elements, turn them on. So I've got a driveway drawn, I have a, a concrete path leading up to the doorway, um, some steps and some um, landscaping. So when I'm creating my site plan view now, I'm going to go to my terrain tab and pick on our site boundary tool. When you're looking at your full 3D model, you'll notice that there's a green bounding box all the way around it. And that's the extent of the green grass, the terrain, when you're out in a 3D view. So when I'm out in a 3D perspective view here, that green grass is the outline that I see in 2D. I probably don't need to see it on my working drawing, but it's there for our 3D visuals. So it's entirely separate from our site boundary. Our site boundary tool allows me to define all of the various um, lines of our site plan. So when I pick on that tool, it's different from any other tool in our software in that you're not selecting a site plan from the catalog. Your cursor changes to look like a site instrument and you pick your very first point. So think of it where your very first bar is. I'm left clicking there. And then as I pull up, you can see at the very bottom of the screen in our commander area, it's got my northing and easting, my direction, and my distance. So as I'm pulling up to the top, if I know I wanted it to be 180 feet, then I could come over what's the direction in minutes and seconds that you can get it down to as well. So degrees, minutes, and seconds. So if you're following an actual site plan that's been created, you can follow those. So I left click. And then I'm going to um, come to my next point. So you can be changing the um, directions of those. So I'm going to be going southwest. And I'll go 170 feet. And I'll come down to, I'm going to be going to the south. Um, going southeast slightly and coming down 225 feet. Enter. There is my site plan. I can be more points if I need it to be, but I'm going to right click and tell it that I'm finished. There's my site plan. As it created the site plan, each line of the boundary of my, my um, lot is fully marked with the length and the northing and easting of that particular line. And each corner is marked with the point that it is and the bar. The settings that you have for those, the text, the style of line work that's displayed, is all found under the program settings. So settings, program settings. If you go to the site boundaries options, that's where you can change the style of text used for the bearing line, the length, the pegs, 
how you're showing your pegs. Are they square or are they round? And you can change all of those values as far as the colors as well that you want to show that boundary line in. Now that it's in, um, I'm going to transfer that information onto my working drawing sheet. So I'm going to go to my very last page, my site plan page. And again, I'm going to be defining a smart view. Because I've drawn that site plan on my model, I define a view of my model. I want to insert onto the sheet. Here I have a view of everything that I've drawn. So I'm going to take advantage of that view filter, clicking on that little eye icon to turn on and off the visibility of various elements. So as far as my model is concerned, I'm going to display nothing but the roof surface itself. And as far as the elements on terrain, I'm going to keep them all on, but I'm going to turn off the actual green bounding terrain box itself. We don't need to know the extent of the 3D grass. We do need the site boundary. We do need the plants, paths, and fills, so I'll keep them on. Um, I can also turn off the dimensions and click OK. So we get a view of our model. Um, I'm just going to zoom in here. And there's our plants. I'm going to turn on a couple more things here. I also need to turn on the roof. And I've turned some of those. Uh, let's turn on the outline of our walls as well. Maybe that'll be a little bit more telling from us for us. So I'll just turn on uh, walls, doors, windows, turn off the wall framing, and click OK. So we have that type of view um, to insert as well. And then from there, there's our view of our, our um, site plan. From there, if I want to change that scale, if I need it to be any smaller, I can change that. I'll change that to 316. And then I click Insert, and a copy comes onto our sheet. It's huge. At, even at 3 sixteenths of an inch, it's not going to fit onto our sheet. We can see it's not working. So I can left click on the Insert a View. In our Object Properties to the right, I can tell it I need to redefine the settings of that and try changing it down to an eighth of an inch and hitting Update. Still too big. At eighth inch equals a foot. It's a large lot that we're dealing with. So I can, again, redefine the settings, select that view, redefine the settings, and let's see how it's going to be at a 16th. Click Update, and now it fits onto the sheet. And then I can pick it up and move it as I need to. By left-clicking on it, you'll notice that blue square that appears in the middle. And that's our grip point, and by holding down my left mouse button on top of that blue grip, it allows me to move it around if I need to as well. Site plan, details, elevations, and our floor plans. Key to remember on creating your working drawings is that Define Smart View dialog box. By going in there and remembering that you can turn things off, changing the scale, zoom in on different things, because what you see is exactly what is going to be illustrated onto your working drawing sheets. Um, you can have a really nice set of working drawings. The last thing that I want to do before I start taking your questions and answers is on this very last sheet, add some um, different text and um, some different schedules. So once I'm done this portion of the webinar, um, we're going to go directly into your questions. So if you're Thinking of some questions right now, you might want to type them in so that I have time to answer your question. Because right after we're done schedules, we're going to go right into uh, your questions. So I'm going to go back out to my model. And here I want to create a couple different types of schedules, a window schedule and a door schedule, um, to define the choices that we've made for those various elements. So I'm going to go up to Tools, Analyze, Schedules. And there you'll see door, window, member, and room schedules. I'm going to start off by creating a door schedule. When I click on the door schedule tool, it'll look through all the various doors that I've inserted onto the model, and it will list them out for us. And you can see it's going to mark the different doors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's going to give their size, a description, an account. And if I scroll over to the right, I can also put in a note that I might want to add about those. And just by clicking in here, I can type right in here and automatically add the notes. 
If there's different information that I wanted to relay in the schedule, I can click on the Setup button. And the Setup button allows me to define the information that I want in my schedule. So as an example, if I look at the size of the door, um, the door itself could be width times height or height times width. So depending on how you want to define the size, you can do so. Beside that, you'll see width. And that's the width of the column that is given that information for the size. So I might back that up to be um, 1.75 um, inches. That's all we really need, 1 and 3 quarters um, for the size. The description is automatically going to look at the name of the element that's been given and um, fill it in for us. I think that's very helpful. But I think the width of that column is a little bit too wide. And again, I'll bring that back to 3. Count how many of those types of doors are in our model. We're going to count those. And I'm going to bring that to a 1-inch column. And then we have our notes. And we've left 8 inches for notes. I'm not going to be so generous. I'm only going to leave 4 inches for our notes. So all of these different variables can be added in as columns of information in your schedule. So if you also wanted to know the thickness of the door or the, um, the rough opening and the height, the width rough opening, um, maybe you needed to know the manufacturer, the supplier, the price, all that information can be brought in through this schedule. And I'll click OK. And you can see it's updated to reflect the new width that we've given everything and that it's height times width now. At the bottom of this schedule dialog box, it can automatically tag the items in your floor plan. So it's going to create this schedule off to one side. But if you wanted to, it can automatically create tags that correspond to the schedule. So door number one will get a, a number one tag on it. I'm going to tell it, yes, I want it to do that. And I click OK. I always insert my schedules far off my building. I'm going to put it way off here to the right-hand side. Here's my schedule that's inserted onto my model view. It's following all the rules that I told it to follow when I was setting it up. And if I look at my model, um, you can see all the doors now have numbers in front of them that correspond to that schedule. So if I come back to my for site plan sheet where I might maybe want to put my schedules, I'm going to define a smart view. The reason I like to put the schedules off to one side is what you see is what you get. So if I just zoom in around that schedule, that's the only thing on my screen. I don't have to take the extra time to turn off the visibility of other things I might not want to see. So I always find it very handy for the schedules because you're not really going to look at them in conjunction with your model, you want them on your working drawing sheets. Put them way off into space, away from your model, so that it's easy to just insert them separated. So I insert that door schedule. There's, there it is. I'm going to go back to our model, uh, Tools, Analyze, Schedules. This time I'll do a window schedule. Okay, So Tools, Analyze, Schedules, Window Schedule brings me into our window schedule dialog box. Again, the same type of options that I had for a door schedule. So if I do want to um, change any of the setup information and columns of information, add maybe some different ones in, I can do so. Also, at the very bottom, we can see it's going to tag our various windows in as well. So I'm going to click OK. There's our window schedule. Again, I'm going to insert it off my model, away from my door schedule so it's isolated go back to my last piece of paper, define a smart view again one last time. And again, what you see is what you get. So I'm just going to zoom in on just the window schedule. That's all I see. I don't have to filter anything off. Leaving it at a quarter inch equals a foot and inserting that schedule onto my sheet as well. Quick way of getting those in. Again, if I wanted to update my plan view here to also include these, the marks. I can left click on it and it will be an update of the contents. And now that it updated the contents, you can see the window and door marks are put in there. There's number one that will respond to my window and door schedule as well. 
lots of information that we covered today. Let me quickly recap before we get into the question and answer part of our webinar today. So before we created our working drawings, we made sure that our model was complete. Never start your working drawings with a half-finished model, because then you're going to have to constantly update the, the smart views anyway. So now that my model was complete, before I went to the working drawing sheets, I then took advantage of the dimensioning tools, auto exterior and auto interior, because I won't find those in worksheet views. Those are unique to track around the model wall. When I go into my worksheets, everything is more of a 2D representation so I can print it out. So take advantage of those tools. Also, before you go to your working drawing sheets, we also created a section view, picking points to show the slice through the model and then a third point to show how deep we're looking to the model and in what direction. Then we slipped right on to our working drawing sheets. We first talked about the title blocks. This is the shipping default title block with version 11. And we talked about how this title block is defined in its definition by the lines and text that are part of it and also attributes, updatable text that can change per instance of this title block inserted. One of the things that we inserted was, and we talked about the project manager and how it's linked. The project manager tags automatically go through and are placed onto these um, into the title block as a default. And I showed you also if you are using your own title block, how by going to the insert pull down menu under blocks, you can insert an attribute, and that could be one that is linked to our project manager by inserting those right directly into the title block, they will update for you as you insert more instances of that title block as well. Then we just started to define smart views. And really the best information that I can give you about inserting your smart views is really understanding that this area in here, this little preview, what you see in there is exactly what you're going to insert. So take advantage of the tools at the bottom by filtering through things, turning the visibility of different things on and off, you can really change the type of view that you're inserting um, so that it um, can be just a floor framing plan or an electrical plan or a um, roof plan like we had inserted onto one of our sheets as well. Also take advantage of all the different types of views you can have. 3D views if you wanted to illustrate um, and create a more of a preliminary plan or the section views or the elevation views that you'll need um, to illustrate what the um, model looks like for construction purposes. We talked about the datum lines that can automatically insert with sections and elevations. You can define the color of them, the line thickness, the line weight, and the text that's put in with them as well. Quick way of um, automatically including that information onto your drawings. When we looked at the elevations that we inserted, we talked about the different tools that are available under the Draw tab. We used the Roof Symbol tool to automatically show the roof um, symbols, that it was a 312 slope. We took advantage of the descriptive leader text. And we also took advantage of just the description text, automatically pull off the description of the various elements so we can quickly label our elevations and our sections and um, even our floor plans as well. The site plan itself that we inserted on our very last sheet, we made sure that we had the site plan uh, drawn on our model and then we inserted it and took advantage of the um, redefine settings options that we have so that we could find just the right scale to fit it onto our sheets. What I'd like to do now is leave the last half hour of our class time together for specific questions that you might have about creating your working drawings um, so that I can help you with those today. In the GoToMeeting console that's probably on the right hand side of your screen, you will see a questions portion. You can type in questions and they are sent directly to me. And you don't have to worry about anybody else reading your questions or that I'm going to read out your name in conjunction with your question. Um, 
I keep that very private, and your questions are great questions for everyone. So don't hesitate to ever ask a question during our class times together. So the first question, how do you add worksheets like a foundation sheet? Excellent question. Um, I'm going to come up here to the, go first of all to my worksheet tab. Great. And I'm going to go up to the view pull down menu. Under the view pull down menu, you'll see view manager. So view, view manager. Under the view manager dialog box that pops up, it shows me all of the various um, sheets that I already have. So I have my one floor plan, two elevations, detail sections, and it shows you the default scale to the side. If I go up to the views pull down menu at the top there, you can see that I can add another worksheet. And another worksheet will be added. So I could name that anything I wanted. So I could say that's sheet five for foundation plan. Okay, so I can add as many sheets by going up to views and add a worksheet and keep adding those worksheet spaces. Now I'm going to hit close because I only want to add one. I want to show you another way of putting it in too. When I go to five foundation, you'll notice there's no title block here. It's just another view here on this that I have to insert a sheet to. So to get that title block sheet, I'd have to come up to import a CAD file like we did for our details, but this time go to the title blocks and tell it that I want a D landscape style sheet and click open and it shows me my default title block and click insert to attach it to my cursor and it will bring up all the attributes that I can change and update. So I'll say I'll click OK to those and zoom out and there's my title block. Another way to create additional sheets, before you start inserting views like we did, you can come to your sheet, right click on it at the very bottom. I'm right clicking on five foundation and I'm going to hit copy the view. If I copy a view, it copies everything about that view to the next view. So on this new tab, it's also called Five Foundation Plan, and it also has the title block. By right-clicking on it, again, I can go to the View Manager, and on this new sheet, I can update and say, well, this is actually Sheet 6, and it is maybe another sheet of um, elevations. Oops, and I'll just update that to say elevations. Okay, so there's two things you can do. You can copy the view if there's nothing drawn on that sheet yet so that you know that you're not um, bringing over the elevational view that might be already on it. Just the title block, best way to copy the view. But you can go up and in that view manager, in there you can also add a new view. Just know that when you add a view here, a worksheet view, it doesn't come with a title block automatically. That's something you have to insert. So you can copy the ones that we have there. Excellent question. All right, our next question. It appears that nat dimensions naturally are done on center. How can I make reference them from an end of a wall to another end? Um, the dimensions itself all have settings for them. So I'm going to go back to the model space. When you're here in settings, dimension settings, Here's where you define where you want the dimensions to pull from. So I pulled mine from the surface of the end of the wall, but if you'd rather have it pull from the exterior face of the stud wall or the center line, that's where you can pull them from. Um, so depending on where you want your dimensions to appear from, this dialog box allows you to define how you want them to appear. I had mine for today's class all going to the ends of the surfaces, so if I zoom in there, you can see it's going to the outer face of that stucco. But if you'd prefer them to go to the center line, then go up to the settings, dimension settings, and underneath dimension settings, you can change that to the center of core if you'd like. And oh, I should also point out for the interior, that's going from outside edge to outside edge, but if you wanted center, you can do that too. How do I create a detailed block 
and save it so I can use that same detail block on different projects and customers. Okay, there's a couple things we can do. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, I'm going to add a worksheet. And on this worksheet out here, you'll see there's no title block. There's nothing out here. So it's just this one worksheet. Here, this one view, no worksheet, no information. I'm going to define a smart view of my model the section view like we did before and I'm just going to zoom in on the footing that's all I want to see again what you see here is exactly what's going to insert so if I pull um, and use uh, take advantage of these zoom tools at the bottom I can um, use those so I'm just going to create just that type of view right there and I'm going to leave it at a half inch equal to foot and I'm going to turn on the hatch pattern so we can see the hatch patterns going from there as well. And then I insert that as a drawing onto my sheet so it gives me the basis um, for my um, detail. I'm going to edit the definition of this view because I again brought in those data lines that I don't want to include. Delete those out so I've just got this view. With this view that I have now I can um, add further information. I'm going to escape out of here so that it's just working on it. Tools, text, um, and I'm going to do a leader, description with leader, point out that foundation wall, and add in my text there, concrete wall, and maybe I want to um, draw with a circle and show the drain tile off to the side here. I can do that. Um, I'm going to actually select it and move it right up against my foundation footer. Perfect. There's my drain tile. So I've developed this type of detail. I've taken advantage of bringing in a view of my model that will give me some of the information. I've taken advantage of these draw tools, line, circle, arc. I've added text. I've added some hatch. Now I want to save it as a block that I want to use again. Two things that you can do. The reason I brought it out here onto a sheet with absolutely nothing else is now I could go to File, Export, out as a 2D DWG file, a 2D drawing. So when I send that out as a drawing, I could save that anywhere. I'm going to save it under Drafting Objects Details and say, uh, new block, that'll save it as an AutoCAD block. And that will now be in my details directory. So I can create and insert that by coming up here to insert and going to this import a CAD file view, details. If I scroll down, there's new block. So I can insert that on as many new different drawings as I'd like to and um, use that on all my projects. Another thing that you can do is come up here to insert blocks, define a block, give it a name. So I'll call this um, new block, but I'll put the number two behind it so we can see that it's different. I need to define a smart uh, a point where I'm going to insert it again. I need to pick a base point, so I'll pick this lower left-hand corner here. So when I go to insert it again, my cursor is going to be attached to that corner. I need to select the objects. So I'm holding down my left mouse button and crossing through everything that I want to include. And then I right click and hit enter. So I've defined the block. I've given it a name. I've given it a base point of where I want to pick from it again. And I've selected the objects. And I click OK. When you come back up here to insert blocks, you'll see that there's an insert block from file. If I remember that I was working on this particular drawing file, which is called, at the very top of my screen, you can see it's called workingdrawings.bld. When I use that tool, um, insert block from file, it allows me to look at a particular drawing file. So I'd look at workingdrawings.bld, and it would list all of the blocks that I've inserted into that drawing so I could use them on another project. So now if I was working on the Smith project, I'd insert block from file, look at workingdrawings.bld, 
and I would have my new block two here that I did with the 8-inch concrete wall, and I could insert it. That really calls on you remembering what file you inserted into previously, and remembering, oh, I drew that block in the Smith project, I believe, and looking for it. So I think the better, cleaner way of doing it is making sure you're on an entirely different view, exporting it out um, as a DWG file, saving it in with our details. It'll be the default directory. And um, then you can insert it using the insert uh, tool here, insert a CAD file. So two different ways. I hope one of them um, works well for you. Should notes be saved as blocks so I can use on future drawings? What do you recommend on saving notes and general notes? That's another great question. You might have um, some standard notes that you need to use on every drawing. Every new project that you have, maybe you have your disclaimer that you want to use, or there's um, some certain specifications that you include on all of them. If they are so common that you'll use them on every project, you might want to type them out as part of your title block so that they're always there every time that title block is inserted, it has it. Another thing to take advantage of as far as text, if I come into our text dialog box here, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner of our text dialog box, there's an import function. I would recommend that you type out all of your notes in Microsoft Word or in Notepad. We can import a TXT file and a rich, tar a rich text file. And let me just click on here to find out that extension there, RTF file. Um, the difference between a TXT file and an RTF file is um, that an RTF file will remember any formatting that you did. A text file will remember all the strings of text. Um, these are my specifications, blah, blah, blah. The rich text format will remember that I bolded and underlined, and these are my specifications. So to bring in all of the um, various um, things that you did to the, the text in that note. So in Microsoft Word, type out your notes, save them as an RTF file, and then you can import that, and it will fill it all in here automatically. So that if you know for one project you need the um, concrete specifications, you can grab that RTF file, concrete specifications.rtf, import it. On the next file, you might have to have another specification that's very specific to maybe the, the site that you're dealing with, sloped terrain, walkout basement specifications, grab that text file. So type them all up in Word save them as a rich text file, and then grab them as you need them and import them. I think that's the best way to save time on typing notes after notes, especially if you need them project after project. Take advantage of that import tool and import them as you need them. OK, that seems to be all of the questions that were up there. Great questions, by the way. But if you're thinking about asking a question or maybe one of those questions, you need a little bit more clarification, type those up now. I'll leave that uh, chat panel open for one more minute for any questions uh, that you might have. And again, just as a reminder, I did tape today's class for us. And I will be putting it up under our webinar archive. Um, and for those of you that may not have ever been up to our webinar archive before, if you come to www.cadsoft.com and you go to our client center, you'll notice that there is a webinars portion at the very top. Let me just erase all of those texts that I put in. And it lists all of our free one-hour classes that we have every week. Today's class is a little bit different. It's a two-hour class. Um, and it's not going to be on the schedule, but it will be in the webinar archive at the very bottom of that page. So if you click on that webinar archive, it will have a login and password, and we will be sending that out to you. So if you want to um, view today's class again, I will make sure that it's part of the archive, and you can um, view it as well. And make sure that you do take advantage of our weekly classes as well. They're shorter. They're only about a half-hour lesson. and the hour and a half that we had today, 
um, but you get some great learning opportunities with them. Uh, next week's class is on imports and exports, and then we're going to talk about scale, creating details, templates, so lots of great information in all those classes as well. And let me just one last look for any questions. And there doesn't seem to be any further questions for today's class. So I want to thank everyone for taking the opportunity to join our class today. And I hope you learned um, about creating working drawings and maybe found some efficient tools and different time savers that I covered today to help you with your working drawings. Always remember, you have toll-free technical support. So if you did want to go over any of the information in today's class, make sure you do call in or send us an email at support at catsoft.com and we'll be happy to um, look at your drawings and help you out along the way. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.